Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video we are tracking Disturbance 1, looking much healthier today and potentially being a gulf threat or a threat to Florida. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibbets.com for Wednesday, July 31st, 2024. Black arrows pointing towards Disturbance 1, looking much healthier than it did just 24 hours ago. We also have two tropical waves that we're monitoring in the eastern part of the Atlantic by our purple arrows. And if we look at our vorticity map, which is the spin and energy in the atmosphere, you can see how our tropical wave, or Disturbance 1, has finally consolidated all of its energy into one small bundle of energy. So it's going to have this to work with as it moves through the Caribbean islands and on its way potentially to Florida or the uh, eastern half of the Gulf of Mexico, potentially. <clears throat> so this is what the, the disturbance one looked like yesterday. Everyone was probably saying, come on, Joe, this isn't going to become anything tropical in nature. Look at it. It's devoid of any thunderstorms. And then today, boom. You got all this thunderstorm activity bringing a ton of rainfall to the northern Lesser Antilles Islands, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and then eventually it's going to continue moving westward towards Hispaniola, the Bahamas, Cuba, and Turks and Caicos. So it still has a 0% chance over the next two days of developing, mainly because the path of this tropical wave is going to take it right over the islands. And that land interaction is really going to hamper any kind of development of the system. But as we get through the next seven days, it's a 60% chance of developing on either the east or the west coast of Florida as this moves westward. So let's look at the GFS model and see what side of Florida could see this system and what we could see potentially if it's going to be a tropical wave, it's a tropical storm, a hurricane. So let's look. So the black hexagon is disturbance one. Purple and pink on the right side of your screen are our two other tropical waves. You can see the abundance of moisture it's working with now. It's split that Saharan air layer in two. So it's got moisture to work with. And it's got a somewhat favorable environment, a little bit of wind shear to work with. The biggest threat right now would be the land interaction, which is why it's not going to develop over the next 48 hours. As you can see, it's going to be going over Hispaniola. And the mountainous terrain of uh, that island is going to hamper any low-level circulations from really developing. It will still maintain a lot of moisture, so expect a lot of rainfall, flooding, mudslides, you name it. And the wind shear will be somewhat increased while it's moving here. But look at the Gulf of Mexico with that light blue wind shear, uh, less wind shear. That's going to be a very favorable environment once it gets into that region. So by the time we get to Sunday, August 4th, we see that vorticity, that tropical wave, is now on the west coast of Florida, just to the south and east of the Tampa St. Pete region. And... It's going to have all of its moisture intact, a lot of tropical energy, and it's got a huge fuel source to work with. The Gulf of Mexico is super warm on the eastern half of the Gulf of Mexico. Cooler on the western half, but the eastern half is super warm. As you can see, we have temperatures that are 30, 31 degrees Celsius. We are approaching 90 degrees Fahrenheit over a large portion of the Gulf of Mexico where this storm is potentially heading. On top of that, we're going to have an upper level ridge overhead, which when we saw that with the tropical wave that formed in the barrel, with the super warm temperatures, we saw rapid intensification. I don't see any signs of that with this just yet, but that possibility is there because the wind shear will be very low. And then as you can see, in just 24 hours, it goes from a tropical wave looking entity into a full-blown tropical storm on its way to the Big Bend area of Florida as a 1,002 millibar tropical storm. Now, potentially it could be stronger if it really, if it enters the Gulf of Mexico as a closed low, 
and then hits that patch of water and rapidly intensifies into a potential hurricane. But since it on this model run, it's a tropical wave, open wave that has to close and then be, uh, rapidly intensify into a tropical storm in that 24-hour time period, it doesn't really get the chance to explode like Beryl did. So that's a good thing, at least on this model run, but the possibility is still there. Now the next thing is, normally, as you can see with the high pressure, the Bermuda Azores High, right in the middle, smack in the middle of the Atlantic, this would pull that storm northward, inland, up the eastern half of the United States. But if we look at the mid-levels of the atmosphere, with a strengthening storm, we have this pink-reddish region. That is a blocking upper-level ridge that's going to put the brakes on our storm as it tries to move north around our Bermuda Azores High. <clears throat> so the steering conditions are going to be negligible. In fact, the storm might even move back south, back towards Tampa-St. Pete region. Why? Because that ridge is not allowing it to move north, even though the Bermuda Azores High says, hey, go that way. And because of that, even if we don't see this become a super strong hurricane, if it's just a tropical storm or a depression or stays even a tropical wave, we could see a ton of rainfall from this system, even if, be if it becomes unnamed. We could see anywhere between six inches minimum up to a foot maybe two of rain over the next seven days as this storm pushes through and sits over florida for a couple of days time and then you can see all the rainfall the track of the of this tropical wave in purple as it goes across puerto rico hispaniola and cuba on its way towards the eastern gulf and florida so what's the european model saying because this is the the model that picked up on this system a week ago today when we made our first video about it well as you can see here it takes a very similar path it goes through the caribbean islands into the eastern gulf of mexico develops makes a landfall somewhere around the big bend region and then goes back south towards orlando so here's the ensemble models showing that there's a broad spectrum of areas where it can still potentially go along the East Coast, but more and more models are shifting westward towards the eastern half of the Gulf of Mexico, the west coast of Florida. And if it stalls long enough, potentially even creep its way towards the rest of the Gulf Coast states, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, maybe even towards Houston, based on the GFS model. So something that we're definitely going to have to keep an eye on, not just for Florida, but for all of the gulf states if this one wants us to linger around and sit in that open waters of the gulf of mexico absorb all that energy and then just say hey any mini money mo which one do i want to pick so we'll keep an eye on disturbance one potentially be our next big threat especially in the gulf of mexico hopefully it's not but we'll keep an eye on it just in case as a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.